Hello and welcome to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat. Now, when we buy health insurance, most of us feel a sense of ease if we have a large sum assured as part of our policy. But uh, that might not be enough. All costs lower than your sum assured may not necessarily be cleared by the insurance company. Most medical insurance policies have a sub limit under several heads on various aspects of hospitalization. Now, this can cause a significant outflow from your pocket. To help us understand the concepts of sub limits and help us plan health insurance, Insurance better we have with us Yashish Zaya, CEO and founder of Policy Bazaar. Welcome to the show, Yashish. You know, before we get into this concept of sub limits of health insurance policies, now let me ask you: What is a construct? What is a good health insurance policy to buy, uh, which has a good, uh, you know, framework uh, ab about it? Sure. So let's let's start with what are health costs? You know, what happens when a person falls sick? When a person falls sick, multiple things can happen. They may go to a hospital, get cured quickly and come out of the hospital, 48 hours are not over. That is usually called OPD. Second thing that may happen is, the person may undergo some surgery, again, 40, uh, 24 hours not over, left the hospital before that. That's called surgery, right? Third thing is, if you're hospitalized for longer than 24 hours, that is usually what is covered by the basic health insurance plans in the country. Now, when you have a health insurance plan, it has certain limitations. St we start off with things called exclusions. So certain diseases or certain uh, uh, things are not covered for a period of time. Maybe two years to four years, they are wait periods. They're usually related to pregnancy. They're usually related to, to such costs that the individual who's buying the policy would already know those costs are likely to come in. So they are related to pregnancy or pre-existing diseases. So most of these get delayed for a period of time. Then what you have is sublimits. So sublimits essentially say that you have a sublimit is largely around room rent cappings that uh, your room rent can be 2,000 rupees, room rent can be 4,000 rupees. There may also be sublimits around certain diseases that in case there is a, a, a heart disease, so much is the cost. In case there's a pregnancy, 25,000 rupees or 12,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees. So all these sublimits are there to protect the insurance company from a very large uh, bill that can come because of uh, you know cost escalations and uh, better. On top of this, you have things called loadings. So loadings happen if you make a claim you may have a loading. The better insurance policies have no claims based loading because it's not your fault. You haven't gone to take make the claim. It's happened to you. When you bought the policy, you did not know you want to have a claim. So the fair thing is not to have a claim based loading and there are policies out there that don't have claim based loading. Then there are policies that give you benefits if you make no claims, which is the reverse of that. Now these benefits can come in the form of higher sum assurance. So you know, if you have a 5 lakh rupee policy, it automatically becomes a 10 lakh rupee policy over the next three years. Right. Uh, restore benefits, etc. And these benefits, you know, uh, or they can come in terms of lower premium because you've had no claims. The ones that enlarge the cover are usually uh, better. So th that's the basic construct of, you know, health insurance. Right. So now let's get into sub uh, limits. Of course, you talked about it briefly yeah. just now. Um, explain to us what sublimits are okay. and why are they important to look at when you're going to be hospitalized um, uh, you know either way whether it's an emergency or uh, it's something that you need to get done in a hospital yeah so see uh, nowadays what's happened is there are lots of types of hospitals available uh, to an individual from a tertiary care hospital to you know simpler hospitals to uh, 10 uh, 10 uh, bed uh, hospitals right the costs of these hospitals are very different, especially the higher end hospitals can give you lots of options. You could, one could stay in a general ward, one could stay in a uh, two people room, one could stay in a single room, one could stay in a deluxe room. There are lots of these uh, pieces out there. The sublimits have been put out there to generally protect the insurance companies from very, very high costs that can come because an individual might avail of uh, a better facility. All the costs are associated with the room rent. So when the doctor comes to meet you for consultation, when the individual is in hospital, the charge that the doctor will levy will depend upon which room one is staying at. Basically, the basic concept, you know, concept of uh, medical treatment in India is that there is uh, one looks at affordability. So if one is staying in a 2000 rupee uh, room rent uh, uh, room, or one is staying in a 10,000 rupee room rent room, the charge that the doctor will make are going to be different. If there's a surgery, if there's a bypass surgery, if there's any surgery whatsoever, the charges of the two uh, will be different. And the room rent capping basically means if one has a 2000 rupee room rent capping, then it means that all char charges that the company will be able to pr pay for you will be those which the person with the 2000 rupee room rent capping can have. 
So, so what you're basically saying is that uh, depending on the cost of your room, all the other services of the hospital are going to be charged. Many of the services are charged. Basically. Wi within, yeah, so if the, it's a A bracket, then uh, the surgery is going to end up costing you much higher. Absolutely. And, and, and the insurance company is saying, look, we're not going to pay for that extra luxury that you want to get out of your health insurance plan. So you have to pay that separately in, in a yes. nutshell. Yes. And it's deceptive because people don't understand this when they take a room rent cap. They believe that the insurance company, if you have a 5 lakh rupee cover, the consumer believes that up to 5 lakh rupees, everything is covered because there's no specific uh, limitation on the consultation fees or etc. The limitation is on the room rent cap. So I'll stay in hospital for five days. Uh, the room rent capping is 2000 rupees. I'll stay in a 5000 rupee hospital. So 3000 rupees per day, I'll pay 15,000 rupees out of my pocket. I'm comfortable doing that. However, what one does not realize is that all the costs will be two and a half times or double. And so if the claim is three lakh rupees, uh, one may only be able to get one and a half lakh rupees as the insurance claim, not just a 15,000 rupee gap, because all the additional costs that have come in, because the consultation was more expensive because you stayed in the more expensive and, and room. And that one, um, you know, going, going by experience and, uh, you know, talking to other people, that's a major issue and that's a major heartburn as far as people, you, w one goes into the hospital without even reading what your caps are or what you're allowed. Absolutely. I, I mean, so what would you advise people to do in that case? My view is, if you can afford it, avoid room rent caps. But you will notice that room rent caps or uh, sublimits, room rent sublimits, also come with lower premiums. So in case you want to spend 6,000 rupees uh, on an insurance policy versus 3,000 rupees on an insurance policy, 3,000 rupee insurance policy will most likely have room rent caps also. Now, the second thing I would advise is look at the hospitals around, see what the room rents are. Are you comfortable? Are you genuinely comfortable with that room rent cap? So if you do want to go for a lower premium uh, policy, if there's a 2,000 rupee room rent cap, are you genuinely comfortable living in a room which is 2000 rupees? Because if you are not, if you're going to live in the room that is 4000 rupees, then just spend that extra money and take a policy without the room rent capping. Also remember, room rent cappings are not very good to take in the long run because today you may take, so just imagine what kind of a hospital room one would get 20 years ago for 2000 rupees. Sometimes just, just backward gazing helps quite a bit. Uh, in 2000 rupees, 20 years from now, one may not even be able to step inside a hospital. So the room rent capping on a policy, which health insurance is the one policy an individual is most likely to keep throughout their life. So room rent cappings will work against you as you get older, because hosp with hospital inflation, medical inflation, price of medical, everything going up, uh, you would not be able to avail the facility that you took this policy in the first place for and the policy will become quite meaningless. So of course we've focused on room rents. Now yes. is that the only part where sub uh, limits no, are applied? Are, so let's talk about that. A so there are sub limits applied on certain surgeries, on certain procedures. As I mentioned, there are sub limits on maternity, uh, which are usually about 25,000 rupees. So if uh, one goes to a very plush hospital and the maternity cost is 75,000 rupees, uh, even though the individual may have a 5 lakh rupee health cover, one will end up uh, paying the, 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 the difference themselves. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, ag against each of the surgery types that are, that are mentioned, which are covered, there will be certain uh, room rent cappings. In fact, hospitals have negotiated rate cards for pretty much everything which go with the room rent and the sublimits. So ideally, one should buy a policy where there are no sublimits uh, because these sublimits will work against everyone as inflation pro proceeds, etc. But uh, surgeries and uh, procedures, each one will have a certain uh, capping, uh, which would be a sub sublimit. So right, of course, sublimits, it's something which is very important that one needs to look at. Um, you know, tell us for the sake of our consumers, what is, what is a good way to plan? I mean, you know you're going to go in for a surgery, right? So how does one go about planning that? Because a lot of heartburn, a lot of people feel, you know, they cheated for some reason. Um, how do we avoid that? How do we systematically go to a hospital, make sure that we get what is due to us um, without that heartburn? Yeah. So I think almost instantly when uh, reach the hospital, uh, you should have understood your plan. But even if you have not, uh, speak to the TPA. There's a TPA desk there, third party administration desk, uh, which the receptionist will guide you to understand what is covered, what is not covered, so that you don't go in for something which is not covered. 
and you don't have heartburn at the point of exit. See, most of the payments are made when you are exiting or some advances are paid up front, but the real billing and settlement happens at the end. But to avoid, uh, you know, uh, some misunderstanding at that point, at least even if you've not understood the policy when you bought it, as you get into the hospital, understand the policy so that you make your decisions based on what you are likely to uh, end up spending rather than make your decisions on without understanding that. Right, Yashish. Any other types of sublimits that the consumer needs to be aware of? I think uh, when, when one is talking about sublimits, there also come things like co-payments, uh, 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 claims-based loading. One should avoid policies which have claim-based loading, uh, which have co-payment, which have significant co-payment, unless one is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a health uh, issue. One should also understand exclusions because many people do not understand uh, the fact that certain pre-existing diseases are excluded. You know, a, s a single read through your policy document would provide all these things like sublimits, uh, exclusions and uh, uh, co-payments. But on the sublimit side, because it is worded in such a way that it is not very easy for the consumer to understand its implication, uh, I would advise if you can afford it, please, you know, avoid any policy which has got uh, sublimits. Because try to take the policies without sublimits. Uh, that, that and is there a major difference, um, a major financial? Uh, uh, I would say about a 20% price difference is there, which is which is fair also because uh, you know when you don't have, see with sublimits you will mostly if you look at a typical treatment if the person has used a higher room rent etc, you will end up getting about 60-70% of the total claim point. So paying uh, another 20%, 25% to get over the sublimits uh, is is not a bad idea, especially in case of you know uh, families, young families, etc. It's very important. Right. On that note, we need to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be taking your questions. But uh, do write to us at ask.policybazaar.com or tweet us at policybazaar underscore in, and we'll see you shortly after this break. Keep watching. Welcome back to Policy Bazaar. I'm Arjun Bhagat and with me is Yashish Dhaya who's going to be answering your questions. Uh, we've got uh, Ridhima from uh, Kolkata and she asks, can we transfer NCB no claim bonus to a new vehicle and what is the process for transfer? Uh, this is a fairly straightforward process. So when one is selling uh, the old uh, uh, car to somebody else, at that point you have your no claim certificate, collect the no claim certificate from the insurance company and when you apply, when you buy a new car within the next uh, I think it's uh, 12 months or so. Within the next 12 months, if you buy a new car, when you apply for the insurance, provide the no-claim benefit certificate and the fact that you don't have that uh, car any longer and the, you're, you're moving it onwards, uh, and you will get the no-claim benefit. So if you had a 50% no-claim benefit, uh, you would get that. I had a 50% no-claim benefit, uh, which I had till very recently. I've lost it because uh, I lapsed my car insurance policy. Uh, by uh, by a month or so. I did not renew it on time. So obviously keep your renewals up to date, specifically if you have a large no claim bonus, because if you do not, if you miss it by even a day, you will miss your entire no claim bonus. That's that's just a piece of advice. Right, we've got Shailesh from Pune who asks, uh, I have an 11 month old daughter. My annual income is 4 lakh rupees. Uh, which LIC policy should I buy for her future or uh, for her studies? So uh, from LIC, there is a plan called uh, uh, Komal Jeevan. Um, in this, uh, it's, a, it's a child plan which pays out the child at uh, 20, 22, 24 and 26. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a decent plan like any other child plan. Uh, there's only one complication in this plan that uh, the life insu assured is actually the child. So in case something unfortunate happens to the child, the funds come back which is, which is slightly odd. Uh, there are, uh, but it's a, it's a decent plan that gives, gives an okay return. The other plans to compare are uh, uh, Aviva Young Scholar. Uh, there is. Uh, there are two plans from each DFC, which are which are quite good. There are a few plans from ICICI. There's a plan from uh, Reliance. So lots and lots of plans in the child category. Uh, there's an Edelweiss Tokyo plan, which is quite good, gives gives pretty good returns. Uh, see, when you're buying a child plan, uh, essentially it's the security that the funds will be available for the child when they grow up. So most of these plans are are very comparable and very uh, you know uh, strong for for the for the pla for that particular planning uh, purpose. So please uh, do compare, but uh, yes, uh, Komal Jeevan is the one plan that you would look look for if you wanted an LIC policy. Right, uh, we've got uh, Sham from uh, Kota and uh, he asks, I have a group cover from my company, but it doesn't provide dental cover. Does any insurance company provide for dental treatment? No, dental treatment is not covered by any insurance company. Uh, personal accident policies uh, can cover dental treatment if it is an accident. So if somebody punches somebody or somebody has an accident and breaks their teeth or something, those things would get covered. 
बट जनरल अपकीप ऑफ यू नो द you know is is not is not covered in any insurance policy it's ca- it's it's considered cosmetic uh, treatment but is that the international norm as well internationally as well yes so internationally as well most health insurance companies you would have to take a separate package to cover uh, uh, dental uh, dental is not usually covered in an, in a in a standard health insurance policy so even in a place like the uk which has full nhs cover uh, you would have to pay for dental treatment separately and uh, the costs are not very exorbitant but the costs are there and th- and they are significant because it's um, it's a voluntary treatment which is not a must and people could do it for any purpose so you know where do you draw the line when a tooth breaks do you start treating then uh, you know w- what's covered and what's not covered is very complicated so dental is usually counted uh, within so dental and cosmetic surgery is usually avoided because uh, that's that's people do it mostly to kind of you know for for cosmetic purposes or people can potentially do it for cosmetic purposes let's go ahead right uh, we've got rahul from mumbai and uh, he asks uh, he says i am 27 years old and my annual package is 6 lakh rupees i have two policies of lic jeevan uh, saral spending 90 92000 uh, annually i'm planning to take a, a, a term insurance and one medical insurance uh, i want to cover myself uh, for at least uh, 70 years and uh, whose settlement uh, ratio should be high if so, uh, so he's asking yeah. and also he's talking about his parents so um you know what is a comprehensive uh, cover for that so there there are there are lots of uh, insurance policies out there there are about uh, you know 13 14 companies that are pr- providing uh, digital online uh, insurance cover i think you should take one of those um of course there is uh, aviva egon bharti exa reliance reliance is actually the uh, lowest cost plan uh, running right now uh there is uh, tata there is uh, hdfc there is icici there is kotak there is india first there is uh max life uh, so you've got you got a huge bunch of options out there sbi life uh is, is there so you got you got large large chunk of options out there they've got all sorts of uh, mechanisms so i would suggest take a policy which gives you a uh, an income stream the, the family an income stream in case something unfortunate happens and max and aviva have those policies uh I think uh, uh, from a, a premium perspective you you will get a lot of choice so the cost can be quite limited and in these policies don't cost so much so about a 1 crore cover will cost about 12 13000 rupees or about 1000 rupees per month so for 1000 rupees a month you could get a 1 crore cover jeevan saral is a plan that gives you 250 times your monthly premium as cover from what i just mentioned 1000 rupees giving you a 1 crore cover uh, from most of the other online plans you can get about 10000 times your uh, uh monthly premium as your cover so 250 is actually quite low so jeevan saral is not a very uh, you know uh, strong uh, so he he also cover. asks about jeevan saral he says that uh, i had a word um with a different agent and he told me that the amount on maturity is not fixed however the agent he bought it from said that uh, it would uh, yeah the amount will not vary and made many promises so no so the amount will not the there. amount will not vary there is certain bonuses that come along which are not guaranteed uh but uh, it is it is a standard uh, endowment plan which has a slightly higher uh, see a normal endowment plan you have to have 10 times life cover uh, of the annual premium this one says 250 times monthly cover it's mostly a marketing uh, st- side story because if you look at it you have 12 months so you essentially saying your your one is providing about uh, 20 times uh, right. the annual cover as the life cover instead of 10 times and that's not very significant So the life cover is is quite limited in it. It's a standard endowment plan. It will give you returns of between two to four uh, percent. Not a very strong return pro- product, uh, but you've got it. You've got it. You know now that you're in it, there's no point exiting it because the exit costs are going to be far higher than the benefits of having exited from it. So most of these policies, once you're in them, it's loss making to exit. Yeah, just so just stay just stay through it. Just stay through it. Uh, but do buy a proper term cover. and uh, do buy a proper health insurance policy because those uh, and you have lots of options there do not uh, rely on just one company right uh, thanks yashish that's all the time uh, that we have on this show but uh, do write to us at ask.policybazaar.com or tweet us at policybazaar_in and we'll see you next time with another episode of policy bazaar goodbye